When thinking about travel destinations in the Caribbean known for sailing, it seems that the British Virgin Islands sets atop everyone's list. We have sailed the BVI a handful of times, and while we agree the BVI is the front runner for an overall experience, there are some downfalls. Lately, it seems, getting to the BVI is getting more and more difficult. Flights into Tortola are not reliable, and the price to get there is pretty crazy. And flying into the U.S. side isn't much better once you factor in the cost of taxis, ferries, and possibly having to overnight at a hotel due to the timing of your flights. The cost for eight people adds up very quickly. So what if we tell you that we have found a place much easier to travel to, the beaches are more secluded and just as beautiful, the sea life is plentiful, the locals are super friendly, and the most important thing, the rum tastes just as good as it does in the BVI. All while not putting a large dent in your wallet. In this video, we're going to give you our ultimate itinerary for the Abacos Bahamas and let you know why it is quite possibly better than the British Virgin Islands. We are Jillian and Brian, high school sweethearts from Stillwater, Oklahoma. We enjoy finding new adventures through our travel and have developed a passion for sailing. For now, this channel will show our love for sailing through our bare boat charters, as well as sharing the unique places we find while traveling with friends and family. That is, until we can give up our daily grind and fulfill our dream of crewing our own catamaran. Subscribe and follow along with us on our adventures as we are determined to find the Caribbean's best beaches, bars, and amazing sunsets, one anchorage at a time. A successful skipper will do their research of the cruising grounds in advance to their trip. From our experience, the chart briefing done by the charter companies can be very detailed or sometimes provide little information. So make sure to ask questions and familiarize yourself with the boat and its systems before leaving the dock. A few things we recommend is to buy the cruising guide from where you plan to charter. This guide is a tremendous help and will answer tons of questions that you have. We also recommend using a few apps to assist in weather and navigation like the Windy app and Navionics. They can really help with up-to-date weather information, currents, and tidal range. So let's get to the reason you clicked on this video, the best of what the Abacos has to offer. Here is our recommended itinerary based off of our favorite anchorages, beaches, restaurants, and bars to go to. Also, a few excursions to take for the adventurous types. When you get off the dock on day one, you will head northwest from Marsh Harbor to Great Guana Key. It's only an hour or so sail. This gives you plenty of time to stop off at Fal Key National Park for some snorkeling or head straight to Great Guana Key and spend more time at the bar scene there. When you arrive at Great Guana, you have an option to catch a mooring ball at Settlement Harbor. Dive Guana has a few first come, first serve mooring balls. Or there is a large anchorage with good holding at Fisher's Bay, which was our choice. It is just a short dinghy ride into Grabbers, one of the best bars in the Abacos, and the food is pretty great too. They have a pool and a recently added hut on the beach offering massages.
If you take a walk or short golf cart ride over to the Atlantic side of the island, you'll find Nippers, another iconic bar known for being the bar to hit for Sunday fun days. Their world famous pig roast is seasonal but attracts a large crowd on Sundays. Get to the Anchorage early if you plan to attend this. Nippers also has a large gift shop for those wanting to take some cool Bahamas clothing home. If you need a mooring ball, golf cart, or have scuba divers on board, Troy at Dive Guana is conveniently located in Settlement Harbor. On day two, after a cup of coffee and a morning swim, head north for Green Turtle Key, weather permitting, through the Well Key Passage. This is the only point in the week you'll be outside of the Sea of Abaco in the Atlantic. The waters can be very rough and impassable, so monitor this before attempting. Before reaching Green Turtle, you can stop off at Big O's on No Name Key for lunch and spend some time with the famous swimming pigs. You can anchor just off their pier and dinghy in. They have food and drinks, a pool with swim up bar, gift shop, and even some jet skis you can rent by the hour. Big O's is a great place to spend a few hours off the boat. They have beach volleyball, some bar games, and an amazing view. Make sure to get some conch salad from the Conch King Cowboy on the way back to your boat. After leaving Big O's, we motored around the corner to New Plymouth and anchored just outside a Black Sound near Pineapples, a cool bar with arguably the best drinks we had on our trip. We chose to grab some drinks at Pineapples, then head back and grill out dinner on the boat. If you want to do dinner ashore, Sundowners would be a good option, and Sid's Grocery is about a block away for any provisioning items you need.
The next morning, we left out early. We motored into White Sound on Green Turtle and grabbed a mooring ball from Brindle's dive shop. Brindles is a one-stop shop for bear boaters. They offer mooring balls, ice, and golf carts. They also specialize in many types of excursions from scuba diving to snorkeling to island hopping and sunset cruises. We chose to do the Snorkel Island Adventure, which included snorkeling, hand feeding stingrays, and a beach barbecue. Of course, he made sure we also got a lobster to cook. The island excursion took us to Manjack Key, where we had our own private beach to ourselves. Well, that is if you don't count the stingrays that came out to greet us. This was truly a great excursion that we can't recommend enough. The weather was not great, but we had an easy time making the best of it with Brindle's jokes, his storytelling, and his famous never-ending rum punch. If you rent a golf cart, definitely make it over to the new Plymouth area. There are several shops, restaurants, and bars. And don't forget to stop by Miss Emily B's for the famous Goombay Smash. On day four, we got off the mooring ball early and headed south to Tahiti Beach on the south side of Elbow Key. This will be the longest sail of the trip, but having explored Green Turtle and Manjack for a few days, the long day on the boat was welcomed. When you arrive at Tahiti Beach, there will be a well-protected anchorage with good holding just north of Baker's Rock. From there, it's just a short dinghy ride to one of the best beaches in the world. Tahiti Beach is secluded and accessible only by foot or by boat, and you are guaranteed to find a stretch of beach to call your own. This stop is a perfect beach day, especially during low tide when the sandbar is fully exposed. We have heard that Tahiti Beach can become a party spot during the day, especially when the floating bar, the Thirsty Cuda, shows up on nice weather days. But our experience has been a quiet beach and a quiet anchorage with a few cruisers, usually cooking dinner on board. We were lucky enough to have caught some amberjack on our way south from Green Turtle, so we made good use of our grill on board with some sundowners at sunset. On day five, we headed south to Little Harbor, home of Pete's Pub and Foundry. On the way south, there are multiple anchorages suitable for overnighting, either at Tulu Pond or Linyard Key, both providing plenty of protection from the easterly trade winds. While Pete's Pub has great protection, it is important to only enter at high tide. Whatever anchorage you choose on the way south, don't forget to stop at Sandy Key for some great snorkeling. You can anchor on the north side of Sandy Key and dinghy over to the east side to snorkel. There are moorings for small boats just off the reef.
If you make it into Little Harbor, you can grab a mooring ball and head into Pete's Pub. It is exactly what you think of when you think of a bar in the Caribbean. Enjoy dinner and drinks with your toes in the sand. Just don't forget to bring an extra shirt to leave behind. While you are there, make sure to visit the Foundry, an art gallery filled with bronze sculptures that has been there for over 60 years. For your last night on the boat, head into Hopetown Harbor. You can grab a mooring ball and have plenty of things to keep you busy off the boat. Hopetown has something for everyone. Beaches, bars, shopping, great restaurants, and the iconic Elbow Reef Lighthouse. For a less expensive dinner option, Captain Jack's is right on the harbor. They have a great view of the lighthouse, or for a nicer dinner option, make a reservation at Firefly. You can leave your dinghy at the post office dock and they will send a shuttle to come get you. The harbor utilizes a water taxi that can be held on channel 16 on VHF. The taxi runs between most of the docks in Hopetown Harbor as a free service. Just make sure to tip the captain. Hopetown has plenty of things to see, so make sure you leave yourself enough time. And if not, well, you'll just have to come back and do it all over again. We hope you found this video helpful in planning your sailing itinerary for the Abacos. We have loved our most recent trips. But are the Abacos better than the British Virgin Islands? What do you guys think? Comment and let us know how you think they compare. As for us, we plan on continuing to visit both the BVI and the Abacos every year because we just can't get enough of what each has to offer. If you like the video, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe so you get notified when we post new videos. Thanks for watching!